Hey guys, we're here at Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens. Today we're gonna talk about mussels. Come on aboard. What is a mussel? A mussel is a bivalve, it's a mollusk, so they're related to snails and slugs. These guys are completely aquatic, so they complete all their life cycle underwater. Uh, they are very important for our mission to make the Anacostia River fishable and swimmable because they are filter feeders. We have uh, eight species of native freshwater mussels in the Anacostia River. So we have uh, two species of native freshwater mussels here. This is an, a young eastern pond mussel. Uh, it's about three years old and we can see some of the morphology. So this, from this end, this is where the foot comes out. The foot is what they use for locomotion, for moving. It looks like a sort of like a tongue a uh, white color tongue. They stick it out from here and then they start crawling. On this other end, this is where the siphons come out. What I call the eni and auni, the in-current and the, the out-current siphons. So one is for filtering and the other one is to expel the stuff that they don't eat. Young LY floaters. So like we mentioned before, this freshwater mussels need a host fish to complete their life cycle. In the case of these guys, they need fish from the L-wife family. So L-wife, blueback herring, American shad. So L-wife floaters are fast growers. Pond mussels, on the other hand, are a little slower gr uh, gr uh, growing mussels. One cool thing about mussels, just like the, this tree stump right here, is that they have growth rings. These young mussels grow their shells outward. So this part that you can see more like this color is the oldest part of the shell. They're gonna keep growing outward. They are like trees, right? Like this tree stump where we are at. Uh, they have growth rings. So a marked growth ring like this one right here marks the end of a growing season. The inside of the mussel shell is called the nacre. It can have different colors. Some may be pinkish, other might be just white, kind of like this one. And these mussels occasionally develop uh, pearls. They are not as fancy as the pearls you, you get a, at a jewelry from, from China. The, the pearls in these mussels might look like little warts, not very showy, but they, it's, it's pretty much a reaction when uh, bacteria or pathogen is in the nacre. They develop this kind of warty growth. Freshwater mussels have a fascinating life cycle. They depend on fish to complete their life cycle. First females become fertile. They store the larvae in their gills. The larvae are called glochidia. They look like little microscopic Pac-Mans with hooks on their tiny valves. The larvae are released into a fish, into a host fish. This is the parasitic stage. They eat from the bodily fluids and tissues of the fish for about a month. After that, they drop down into the river bed and start growing as filter feeders as we know them. So these freshwater mussels must have fish, their specific host fish around in order to survive. In these baskets, 
mussels are safe from predators. That's why we have this cover. Normally, muskrats, raccoons, or catfish would eat them. So they are free from those predators. But that's not their only threat. Mussels are one of the most endangered animals in the US. They face a number of human challenges from pollution, diseases, and climate change to the damming of the rivers. Why is that a problem? Because they depend on fish to complete the life cycle. If we dam up the rivers, we block access to their host fish. A river with diminished mussel population is an unhealthy river. Mussels help clean the water for other organisms, from underwater grasses to other invertebrates, fish, and wildlife. The less mussels, the less healthy the river ecosystem is. We're doing a freshwater mussel biofiltration demo right here. So we're gonna put 35 mussels in this tank. And it has some oxygen, as you can see. And on this tank, no mussels. So we're gonna see how they clean the water in an hour. And we're gonna see the difference between the two tanks. So here we are after one hour. We've got 35 mussels here, no mussels here. Check out the difference. The water is much clearer now. That's exactly what mussels do. As filter feeders, they siphon water from the water column, take whatever they consider nutritious and expel what they don't eat, including sediment and other stuff. That's how the mussel power works. We're here at Bossert Point. This is where the Anacostia River meets the Potomac River. So this is where waters mix. In 2015, we started doing mussel surveys to assess the mussel communities in the Anacostia River. We found that the Bossert Point, the, the confluence between the Anacostia and the Potomac Rivers, is a, is a hot spot for mussels. But once you go upriver, we started finding less mussels and less diversity, less species of mussels. All right, so we found a couple of mussels during our survey. So uh, let's go to the table and take a look uh, what we got. Mussels look like stones or rocks for the average person. How do we identify them? Well, we look at the shape of the mussel, the size and the width. Some are thicker than others. And you can see the colors can be different, the general shape. And uh, if the mussel is dead, like this Eastern Elliptio, we can look at the nacre. Nacre gives us a lot of information. It could be whitish, rainbow, salmon color, and this hinge what we call the hinge teeth. Some species don't have hinge teeth, others do have. So there's a number of, of things we look at to tell the different mussel species apart. So this is an Eastern Elliptio, a very cool native freshwater mussel species. They can live up to a hundred years and it's actually one of the most common species throughout the river. Here at Bossert Point is, is the most abundant of all the species. Um, you can see the nice colors inside. This is called the nacre. Uh, you can see in this part it gets kind of like a nice rainbow color. And um, this is one of the species we're hoping to propagate. Eastern Elliptio uses the American eel as the host fish. So it's very specific to the American eel. This is a gravid eastern lamb mussel female. So it's a pregnant uh, female. On this side, you can see that ribbed surface that is wide and dark. Uh, that's the gills that are full of microscopic larva. Maybe thousands of larva are right there right now. They are developing in pouches in her gills. Uh, on the other side, uh, on this side, that white tissue, white sort of orange, orangish tissue is the foot 
That's, that's what mussels use for moving or for burying into the riverbed. Our eastern lamb mussels have a fascinating mechanism to attract their host fish. They have a mantle lure display which looks like a minnow, it even has fake eyes. They wiggle it to attract their host fish, usually a largemouth bass. When the bass comes and bites, the female will release the larva into the fish's body. After doing our initial survey and inventory, we wanted to do more to help the river mussels. So we started a propagation effort to increase their numbers in the places up river where we didn't have as many. That's why we started propagation to enhance the number of mussels and bring all their water quality benefits that they bring with their biofiltration capacity. These are the floating baskets where we grow our young mussel, like this LY floater. So inside each basket, we keep between 200 and 300 young mussels, and they just feed from the water column. By growing mussels in floating baskets, we get a good estimate of their survival and their growth in a controlled environment. That way, we can find the best places to propagate them. So far, we've found that tidal Kenilworth, uh, Kingman Lake, uh, the Yards Marina area have been some of the top three sites. After watching this video, now you have learned everything about mussel power. This project has been possible with the help of hundreds of volunteers. You too can help us by volunteering. Go to our website at anacostiawas.org.